Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I wanted to show you guys a tool known as TensorFlow Playground where we can visually uh, see how we build an artificial neural network and how do we actually train it as well, how to change the number of layers and how to also change the number of neurons, activation layer, and so on. Okay, please note that this tool is independent of the uh, teachable machines, but it's again provided by Google as well. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. So this is simply the type of artificial neural network that we are going to build together using TensorFlow Playground. Just to clarify, so TensorFlow is Google's framework to build, train, and deploy AI and ML models at scale. And uh, please note that TensorFlow specifically is beyond the scope of this course. So we are not going to learn, I would say, how to code in Python or leverage you know, TensorFlow and Keras. Here, I just wanted to show you from a very high level, how can we visually build our neural network and how we can train it essentially live as well without writing any lines of code. Okay, so please go ahead and, and go to that link, which is playground.tensorflow.org. All right, and I have it open in here, okay? So as you guys can see here, essentially I have the inputs, okay? Here I have the first hidden layer, and what I could do is I can change the number of neurons, and you guys will notice that here we have what we call it a dense or fully connected artificial neural network, meaning that all the neurons in one layer are fully connected to all the neurons in the subsequent layer, okay? So if you guys can see here, this input here is fully connected to all the neurons in all the subsequent hidden layer. And if I wanted to make or create a deep neural network, well, I can add a hidden layer. So if you press on the positive, here I'm adding a new hidden layer. And if you click on that adding neurons, you should be able to see, again, additional neurons that are being added. And the more that you add neurons, the more that you're increasing the complexity of the network. And again, you guys will notice that here also I have a dense, fully connected artificial neural network as well. And a very important point to notice here is that this network hasn't been trained yet. If you guys recall, uh, when we cover the training and testing phases of artificial neural networks, is that we build our artificial neural network first, we train it with the training data, and that's when we actually go and change the values of these weights, if you guys remember. And then afterwards, we go ahead and test it and assess its performance using the testing data set. So you guys will notice here that all these values of weights, like point, minus 0 0.29, minus 0 0.19, point, you know, like 1.4, all these values are randomly initialized because we haven't trained it yet. We haven't done anything yet. Here, I'm just building the network, I'm randomly initializing the weights, and I haven't even trained any of the network yet. Okay, and what you guys can see here is, well, you can see the learning rate. We are actually now familiar with the learning rate, and this is simply how aggressive you would like to update your network or update the weights. So let's set it to 0.03 as is. Also here, you should be able to see that we have different activation functions. If you guys remember, we only covered the basic uh, step activation function. You guys can go ahead and change the activation function. Again, we're not going to go into the details of what's ReLU. ReLU stands for Rectified Linear Units, but don't worry about it. This is just, you know, let's, say, let's maybe pick like ReLU, for example, for now. And we can also change the problem type to either classification or regression. And let's stick with classification because that's what we're doing right now. And you can also change what we call it the regularization. And this is simply just a term to ensure that the network, network is able to generalize and not memorize. It's more of a penalizing term that try to improve the generalization ability of the network. Again, don't worry about it for now. What I could do right now is I can, well, select the training data that I need here. So I can select, for example, a very simple two classes and now the network is not trained yet. I haven't trained it yet, but now I can go ahead and actually train it. So if you click play, when I say play, that means I'm gonna start off the training. 
that means now I'm going to feed in the training data to my network and I'm going to try to update the values of weights. So if you click play, here we go, you guys will see that the loss here starts very high and then it decayed afterwards. And now that boundary has been drawn between the two classes. So now I have that green, I'm sorry, that blue uh, area here and the orange area indicating that now the model, my AI model has been trained. And as you guys notice here, the values of weights have actually changed, right? So here, for example, the value of weight becomes 1.1, for example, or 1.2. And that's it. That means now the model was able to train, to learn the difference between these two classes. And you guys will see here, this is the epochs counter. If you guys remember, we also covered the definition of epochs before. And that's every time we feed in all the training data to my model and update the weights once. Okay, so maybe if I try a little bit harder problem, like this problem, for example, and I click play again, as you guys can see, the loss starts very high or the error starts high and then it decays afterwards. And I was able to draw that boundary between the blue class and the orange class. Okay, pretty incredible. All right, and what you guys can see here as well is that you can increase or vary the noise. You can also change the ratio of the training to testing data. So maybe you can change it, make it 80% to 20%. You can increase the noise, for example, in the input, as you guys can see, as you increase the noise, as the problem becomes much harder, because now the two uh, classes are, um, are, are not linearly separable. And you can also change the batch size as well by changing the number of samples or data points that you feed at once to the network, if you guys remember. And you can, again, you can click play as well, and you should be able to see that the network also was able to train right now and was able to draw the boundary to classify the two classes. All right, okay. So now it's time for a quick mini challenge. Actually, it might be a little bit, I would say, uh, hard, but that's the point. I want you guys to experiment with the, um, with the tool. So I want you first to choose the most challenging data set, which is the spiral data set. So you guys will see that here we had four options before. Let me go back. So here we had four options. I want you guys to start with this one because this one, the spiral one, is the most difficult of all. And I wanted to choose it first. I wanted to train the model, okay? And then, because it's a difficult problem, we have to do something about it. Maybe we need to change the architecture of the model, for example. Maybe we need to add new hidden layers or maybe add additional neurons or maybe change activation functions. I want you guys to play with it to try to improve its performance. And next step number three, I wanted to tune the model hyperparameters, maybe play with the learning rate, maybe play with the regularization and try to achieve better model performance. And then finally, I want you guys to perform some feature engineering to improve model performance. So when I say feature engineering, that means instead of feeding in the inputs as is, maybe you can feed in the input squared, or maybe you can sum up the two inputs together and feed them as one input, or maybe add, let's say, x squared plus y squared, for example. Again, there are so many options. So that's it. Please go ahead, pause the video, attempt to solve the mini challenge, and I will be back with a solution in a couple of seconds. Best of luck, and I will see you guys after the challenge. All right, hope you guys were able to figure out the challenge. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first select the uh, spiral, okay? And then next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a shot, maybe click play without changing anything. And you guys would notice here that the network is actually really trying really hard to try to come up with that boundary. But because the problem is quite difficult, you guys will see that now the loss, training loss is at 0.3 and the test loss is at 0.4, right? It's going down, it's improving over time, which is good. And the network here, you guys will see that now I was able to actually like draw the boundary, which is pretty great. And the loss settled at around 0.17 approximately. Okay, and Again, it's trying, it's trying, which is not bad. Actually, the performance is pretty good so far. And what I could do as well is, well, I can maybe change the number of neurons, maybe try additional neurons, maybe try additional neurons too. 
maybe add an additional hidden layer. Okay, and maybe let's add an additional hidden layer as well and give it a shot. And let's click play. And here we go. You guys will see that, again, the network is learning. That's a good sign. Here we're going to, ultimately, of course, we would like the loss to drop to almost zero. That means the error has reached almost zero, and that's a great sign. That means the network was able to, um, um, to generalize. And here we go. So now the loss actually reduced to almost 0 0.06, which is, again, pretty, pretty great. You guys will see that here I have all the spiral here. It's, it's pretty good. And now I'm sending at 0 0.05 of error. Okay, so that's, again, another way of, of solving the problem. Another way of solving the problem, too, is maybe we can perform some sort of feature engineering. So instead of only feeding x1 and x2, which is these two classes in here, maybe I can feed in, let's say, x1 squared, and maybe x2 squared, and maybe x1 times x2, and maybe sine x, and maybe sine x1 and sine x2. Again, you guys can, there's a lot of trial and error in here, and let's go ahead and run it. And as you guys notice here, the network is as well training, and now we are not only feeding in the original data, but we're also performing, again, feature engineering, while increasing the number of inputs that are being fed to the network. And you guys will see that the loss now achieved 0 0.03, which is, again, pretty, pretty good. I think it's better than the previous run. And that's it. The network is pretty stable. The error is actually very, very low. It's almost 0 0.034. And you guys will see that the, the actual blue here has been completely separated from the other class, from the orange class, which is pretty amazing. That's exactly what we're looking for. What you guys as well could do is maybe you can increase the noise level here to try to make it a little bit harder. So now it's much harder problem. And maybe you can give it a shot as well and see if the network is able to do it. And please note that you can do a lot of stuff here. Maybe you can change the activation function, for example. Maybe change or tweak the learning rate, for instance. Or maybe add regularization to try to improve the generalization ability of the network. And here we go. The loss is standing at 0.256. And please note that this is a much harder problem. Okay. And still the network was actually able to get it right. So we are standing at 0.24 loss and again it's really trying okay again the loss dropped to 0 0.06 0 0.05 again pretty incredible and here we go so now the model after around 350 epochs was able to actually draw that boundary here and separate the two classes together the blue from the orange class all right Okay, and that's it. That's all I have for this lecture. And this is the mini challenge solution as well, if you guys want to check it out. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoy this lecture. In the next lecture, we are going to learn how to export our model, how to save and deploy our trained AI model. So please stay tuned, and I will see you guys in the next lecture.